This is 2014's Backcountry. Warning, spoilers ahead. We open up on a forest, and flies buzz around as we focus on the ground level. Then we cut over to a parking garage where Alex and Jen are getting ready for their hiking and camping adventure. Alex tries to make her laugh with his little antics, and she shows that she appreciates his effort. Alex drives them out of the city, and Jen does a Rate Your Boyfriend quiz in a magazine. Do people still do these quizzes? The drive continues, and Alex throws in a CD of, uh, not entirely sure. I feel like this is the song that plays before the Killer Yodeler comes out. I also feel like there's some foreshadowing in the lyrics, too. If there's a Killer Yodeler in this movie, I'll give it five stars, trust me. Eventually, they come to the park, and they head inside the station to meet with the ranger. Ranger Carl comes in to handle their reservation, and he tries to offer Alex a map. Alex assures him that he knows the area well, and he refuses it. Alex tells the ranger that they're going to go up Blackfoot Trail, and Ranger Carl tells him that it's closed for the season thanks to some yahoos that were disrespecting the area. He warns that there's a thousand dollar fine if the two of them are caught up there, and he hands them a first aid kit before sending them on their way. Alex drives them to their campsite parking, and he tells Jen that she has to finish up her business on the phone before they head in. She takes a quick picture of them at the start of their trip, and Alex finishes getting everything out of the car. Then they head into their canoe and push off. I'm sorry, it chose right now to tell me that this is based on a true story. You had to start things off with that. I would have been sold from the start. As they row out, they pass another couple who are coming back in, and they wish each other a good day. The water's peaceful, and Alex tries to point out random spots of interest as they continue. Eventually, they get to their spot, and Alex tries to pull the canoe out of the water. Once they get it up there, Alex ends up dropping the point of the canoe on his foot, but he tries to walk it off. Before they head out, Jen shows him that she brought bear repellent and a road flare. Alex can't believe that she decided to bring these things, but he humors her. Never make fun of someone that has items that could potentially save your life. Alex is out here with no map, no bear repellent, and he probably has a broken foot now. He'd already be dead if Jen wasn't there. They head down the trail and Jen is wary of every sound she hears. Alex assures her that the biggest thing she's going to see is a chipmunk, and he pushes them deeper in. They pass some other hikers who were heading out, and they eventually get to their site. They pitch their tent and Alex starts a fire. After they rest for a minute, Alex convinces Jen to go skinny dipping with him in a little swimming hole they passed. Little do they know that something's watching them from the tree line. Is it that murderous yodeler? When they get back to the campsite, Alex heads out to gather some more wood, and Jen sits to take in all of the nature around her. Soon Brad shows up and scares her with his greeting. When Alex gets back, he finds Jen talking to Brad, and he thinks that he's picking up on a friendly vibe that's a little too friendly. After Alex makes his presence known, Jen tells him that she invited Brad to dinner so they could cook the fish he caught. Alex calls Jen to the tent to talk, and he tells her that he's not too sure about Brad. After a little debate, Alex comes around and decides that they can't really uninvite Brad now, although they probably should have. When it comes time to eat, Brad and Alex decide on different sides, but Brad gets a little alpha male and tells Jen what to cook. She seems to like it too. You do not want to be alone with your girlfriend and this dude in the woods, unless all three of you plan to party. Brad, though, is not to be trusted. After Brad relieves himself right in front of them, he tries to find out their plans for their time in the woods. Alex tries to play it off as though they're just going to relax, but when Brad tells Jen all of the places he'd take her if she was his, he mentions Blackfoot Trail. He asks Jen if she needs a guide, but she tells him that she already has one. Brad moves on from the conversation, and he downs his dinner without taking a breath. Before Brad leaves, he asks Alex what the problem was before, but he gets a little commanding and confrontational about it. Alex explains that he didn't like the scene that he came back to in the beginning, and Brad says his creepy goodbyes. Alex doesn't even wait until Brad's out of earshot before getting mad with Jen for inviting him to dinner. Alex cracks open a beer and he confronts Jen for inviting a complete stranger to dinner for their first night on this trip. He tells her to yell for him if Brad comes back, and he heads out into the woods to get his axe and string up a bag. In the morning, Alex cooks breakfast, and they head out onto the trail. Alex explains why the trail is so special to his childhood, but on the way, he spots a bigger animal track in the dirt. He decides not to tell Jen, and they keep pushing forward until it's time to leave the trail. Jen feels uneasy about this decision, but she follows Alex anyway. Along the way, they touch the trees as they try to balance themselves, and they leave a scent trail. That night, Alex decides to check his foot, and it turns out that the canoe really messed up his toe earlier. Messed up is an understatement. He takes off his big toenail, he just pulls it right off. And what does he say to Jen? It's pretty bad. Yeah, I'd say it is. And when Jen poured the alcohol on it, oh, my skin shivered. After Jen wraps up Alex's toe, the two of them lie down in the tent. Not long after, Jen wakes up tossing and turning, and she hears twigs snapping outside. She wakes up Alex, and he tells her that it's just acorns falling out of the tree onto their tent. Suddenly, a thud follows the sounds, and Alex admits that it was no acorn. 
They listen for a bit longer, but when the noises stop, Alex tells Jen to go back to sleep. No, 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 that's not how things work. You don't just ignore the sounds and move on with your night. In the morning, they find a whole tree broken down, and Jen tells Alex that it wasn't an acorn that did that. Jen's sarcasm is strong here, I love it. Jen tries to tell Alex that she just wants to go home, but he assures her that it'll be worth it once they get where they're going. They head out for the day, and Jen notices a smell along the trail. Alex tells her that it's nothing, but she's determined to find the source. She heads off the trail and she comes across a dead deer that's been hollowed out. After this, Jen and Alex continue their hike, and Alex takes her on the last bit of the trail. Once they reach their destination, they're surprised to find the lake is completely gone. Alex swears that they're where they're supposed to be, but Jen is sure that they're lost. When Jen asks her where her phone is, Alex tells her that he took it out and left it in the car. Okay, Alex deserves to be lost in the woods. This is one of those times where you keep everything on you in case of an emergency. Check it out, this is an emergency. Now they have no map and no phone to contact help. Jen decides that this is as good a time as any to tell Alex how much of a loser he really is. Why don't you tell him how you really feel? She's not wrong though. Alex tells her that he hasn't been sure of any of the trails since the first fork in the trail, and she asks him why they had to go to the lake on her first camping trip anyways. Alex tells her that he was going to propose to her, and he walks away calmly. The two of them take a break to gather themselves, and Jen apologizes for what she said. He tells her that it's okay and they should probably make camp for the night. While Alex is setting up for the night, he hears a loud crack coming from the tree line, and he tries to listen in. He heads into the tent with Jen, and a storm rages on outside. In the morning, we can see that something's outside the tent, and we can hear a large animal sniffing around. Hey, where's Jen's bear repellent? Or did Alex take that out and leave it in the car too? How are they sleeping through the deep rumbling of that bear? When they come out to find their food is gone, Alex tells Jen that it was a raccoon, the biggest raccoon we've ever seen. The two of them make their way through the woods, and Alex ends up even getting more lost than before. They push on with hopes of running into any signs of the park trail, and when they stop for a second, they realize that they're almost out of water. Jen looks around and she finds a bear bed. Now she thinks they need to go as far as they possibly can before stopping for the night. When they do stop, Alex makes a fire and he continues to apologize for everything. He asks Jen if she meant the words that she said before, and she tries to explain that she just said those things in the heat of the moment. He goes to show her the ring he brought for the proposal, but she tells him to wait. They go to eat the half a protein bar that they have left, and he brings out the small champagne bottle he brought for the occasion. Doesn't alcohol dehydrate you even more? This feels like a bad idea on top of a whole list of bad ideas. Do you think we can top the bad ideas? Well, yeah, yeah we can. When they hear branches cracking, Alex decides to scream at the darkness without knowing what's out there. Fantastic, whatever it is knows exactly where you are. What if it's Brad? Between the fire and Alex screaming, the whole forest knows where to find them. Luckily, nothing comes after them, and in the morning, Alex unzips the tent to find a huge black bear right outside. Alex closes the tent back up and wishes for the bear to keep moving on. When he unzips it again, he finds that the bear is coming right towards them. Alex fumbles around to find his axe, and he realizes that it's in his bag by the fire. Jen grabs her bear repellent, and they wait. The bear rips its way into the tent, and it swipes at Jen. Jen's arm is cut up very badly, and Alex tries to fight the bear off. As a result, the bear bites Alex's leg, but Jen grabs the bear repellent again and scares the bear off. Jen tries to wrap up Alex's leg, but the bear comes back and rips Alex out of the tent. This bear is ruthless. Jen bolts out of the tent, and she finds the bear eating Alex, who is no longer with us. Then she grabs the ring that Alex was going to propose with, and she makes a break for the trees. She runs until she falls down the hill, and she ends up whacking her head on a giant boulder which knocks her out for quite some time. When she comes to, she tries to scream for help, but no one answers. Jen takes a look at the ring that Alex was going to propose with, and she slips it on her ring finger. Soon a loud snap can be heard behind her, and she starts to stumble through the woods. She makes her way up a tree when nighttime comes, and she tries to sleep through the night. I don't know how many people don't know this, but bears can climb trees. Luckily, this bear doesn't, but they definitely can climb trees. You're not safe in a tree. In the morning, Jen is woken up by the sound of a helicopter passing over, but she doesn't flag them down in time to be rescued. When she gets out of the tree, she can hear water rushing nearby, and she quickly heads over to drink from the source. After drinking her fill, she pulls back her shirt sleeve to check on the wound, and it doesn't look too good. She washes it in the cold water, and she ties her arm off with the sleeve of her shirt. After taking a moment, she finds some berries to eat, but she's interrupted when she hears the bear coming up behind her. She books it through the trees, but the bear is close on her tail. She comes to a waterfall where she tries to blow her whistle to get help, but when help doesn't come, she decides to climb down the side of the waterfall to get away from the bear. This is almost the smartest move in the entire movie. Aside from the fact that when she can't climb down anymore, she decides to drop, 
causing her ankle to break, so I'd say that she's pretty done unless that whistle actually attracted Brad. Jen makes a splint with two sticks, and she snaps her ankle back into place. After grabbing a walking stick, she starts hopping her way through the woods. That night, she uses her flare to try and find her way through the woods, and the next day, she's still stumbling through the woods. Eventually, she comes to a stop, and she has to take a break by a tree. She passes out, but when she comes to, she finds a deer feeding right in front of her. When the deer walks off, Jen gets back up, and she finds the lake that Alex and her had gotten there in. She finds their canoe sitting by the shore, and she pushes it back into the water. After pushing off, she paddles her way back to the parking lot. When Jen gets to solid ground, she collapses from exhaustion, and a group that Brad is getting ready to take into the woods spots her on the ground. Brad rushes over after he realizes that it's Jen, and the credits roll. You know what? I kind of had a craving to go camping recently, but after watching this, I'd say I'm okay for now, or forever. As for the movie, yeah, give it a shot. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.